Hello, my name is John Capobianco, and I'm a product marketing evangelist uh, for Selector AI. Today, I want to talk about the evolution, which has happened very rapidly, just for me, but also for the industry, moving from classic AI, which, which has hallucinations and has some problems on its own, if we're just making API calls against an AI. Retrieval augmented generation, raptor trees, graph rag. There was a whole intermediary step to augment the generation of the output by retrieving external data. I believe that we are now into the world of agents where we can give some autonomy and the ability to reason and to act to little pieces of code that enable the LLM to act autonomously. Now I have had success with individual agents, but I'm going to show you a video and as well as a few articles that have inspired me to make multi agent. So I'm going to take in this example, an iOS XE agent for Cisco routers, a Cisco ACI agent for the data center for software defined networking with ACI and an APIC controller, as well as Cisco Identity Services Engine, which is another controller based system. So I have three individual agents. Can I get them to collaborate and to cooperate and maybe for a parent agent? to do the reasoning as to which sub agent to invoke. Now the sub agent is going to have access to tools and to Python functions that it can autonomously run and do the reasoning. And it will do this iteratively until it finds a success. So philosophically, it's hard to, di 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 to distinguish, to determine, to tell the difference between human reasoning and artificial intelligence reasoning. Meaning, it may try to use a URL. It may try to post something. It may try a show command. And if the response is not what it expects, if it's not a 200 status code, it's a 400 status code. Or if the parsed command doesn't return a valid payload, it will iterate and reason that it doesn't have the information yet to successfully answer the original prompt. Now this is far beyond rag or raptor trees or even graph rag in that it will iteratively autonomously try again with different parameters and different structure until it gets the successful code. So instead of being polluted with hundreds, potentially thousands of agents, could we put a parent agent in front of these sub agents that we interact with? I'm going to do some Excalibur draw and draw this up and show you some code and show you some examples. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do today is watch a brief part of the discussion between Jensen Wong from the CEO of NVIDIA and Mark Benehoff from uh, Salesforce to talk their discussion about AI agents who understand and reason and collaboration. So this is just a few seconds long, but let's take a listen because this was partly my inspiration to have multi-agent uh, approach. It's insane, but here's the amazing thing. We're going to have agents that obviously uh, understand understand the subtleties of the things that we ask it to do, but uh, it can also uh, use tools and it can reason and uh, it can reason with each other and collaborate with each other. And, you know, gonna, we're going to give we're going to give a problem to uh, agent force mm -hmm. and uh, uh, agents are going to go find other agents uh, that that can help achieve this mission, uh, they'll work together, assemble together, work together and solve this problem. And, and so I, I think the... So I urge you to watch the rest of this discussion. 
It's quite remarkable. It's only from a few weeks ago, and it's easily found on YouTube. Some other articles, right, from Gen AI 1.5, let's call it Retrieval Augmented Generation, above the 1.0 basic AI interaction, to 2.0, moving from RAG to Agent Systems from VentureBeat. Now, this is only from June, but it is a wonderful article here talking about moving from RAG-based solutions into agentic base solutions. Forbes has this wonderful article, The Promise of Multi-AI, Multi-Agent AI, right? And some of the benefits here include modularity, specialization, and these are what I'm gonna be doing. Modular agents that specialize in a specific Cisco platform, for example. And collaborative learning, these agents can interact with each other. So let's do some quick, um, right? So what we're gonna have is a router, we're gonna have a controller and another controller. Okay, so this is the iOS XE. This is the APIC for ACI. And this is the ICE controller. Now, for iOS XD, it has a few different interfaces that we can use, right? We can use REST Conf with a REST API. We could use NetConf and get back XML. Um, I am going to be using the CLI, the command line interface but I'm going to be parsing this with PyETS, which gives me JSON back. All right, now the APIC has XML, has XML. Uh, this can have an XML interface or a JSON interface. And I'm going to be using the JSON interface from the APIC. Okay, now this is, um, now ICE has three different APIs. I'm going to be using the REST API from ICE. Now, in this example, I'm using sandboxes. So my code will work. If you take my code, it will work just fine. Now, in terms of my code, what do we need to do here? So we need an agent for each of these. And we're going to put an agent in front of them, right? And then the user is here and they interface with this first agent. This first agent is going to use reasoning and pick one of the other sub agents, which then makes their call either through PyETS or through the requests library, which is put requests here and here. So what do these agents need to have? So the PyETS agent needs to have uh, access to a testbed file, testbed.yaml with the credentials and the connection information for the iOS XE device. And it's going to have a JSON list of valid parsers, okay? And it's going to have access to PyETS um, parse or execute. Now this agent is going to have access to a couple of things as well. Get, let's just say CRUD activities. Okay, so this is get, post, delete. And it's going to take a list of valid URLs. Similarly, we're going to have the exact same thing here with CRUD activities, with get, post, delete, with a list of valid URLs. 
Now for the sandbox, I can't actually do delete or post. It is read only for the sandbox. So we can only read things, we can't create things, which is fine, for example. Now, what does the main agent have? It really has a list of other agents. Now, all of these things I've listed under the agents have tools. Okay, so this is the tools that the AI agent has access to. Tools here, tools here, and tools here. So the idea is, is that the user asks a question of the original agent. It does the reasoning to pick one of the available agents, which then does the function calling to pull the appropriate command or URL and sends it to the device. And the devices are typically going to return JSON or at least a status code, a status code. So let's take a look at the code. And as you can see, I have my HCI agent, my iOS XE agent, and my ICE agent. Now these have the different functions to do the CRUD activities and to authenticate against the API. They each have their own individual template of instructions. Okay, and then I have the actual references to the ACI URLs, to the iOS XE commands, and to the ICE URLs. All right, I have a testbed file in case we want to connect to the um, iOS XE router via PyETS when we want to do those commands. Now my Cisco agent, the parent agent, only has, you know, 130 lines of code. And this is going to be the agent that decides when to invoke the sub agents. So this is the one we're going to streamlit run Cisco agent. I'm going to open this up in the browser. And again, let's start with something here in iOS XE. And we can say, what version of iOS XE am I running? Let's do something very explicit. Now, we are actually going to see the reasoning happen. So the very first parent agent says, I need to interact with the iOS XE device to retrieve this information. So we're gonna call as an action, the iOS XE agent passing it show version. So the sub agent says, I need to run a show command to the router to get the version information. It picks the show run command tool which takes in the action input of show version. It hands it off and this agent takes the action of running PyTS to get the show version command as JSON. So it makes an observation. I have this JSON payload as the result of my action. I know the final answer. The router is running this version on virtual XE platform and it's been up for seven hours and 15 minutes. It actually boils that down a little further to now I know the final answer. The router is running 17.12.2. Pretty cool, right? So let's do something like, what are my tenant names in ACI? And it's going to go ahead and, and reference, I need to get tenants and it hands it off to the sub agent, which actually going to look for and identify that this URL can get the tenants. So now I have a URL that's supported. We can use the ACI tool to fetch the data it runs the tool, passing it the URL. It gets a successful authentication and the payload of the tenants. 
and can now answer the final question of the tenants that are available in the ACI. Now to invoke ICE, let's do something like what are my network policy, act network. Let's just look one up here. I want to get this right. So ICE URLs, there is network access policy sets. Let's do that one. What are my network access policy sets? So now it's actually going to know that the network access policy sets are managed by Cisco ICE. So I'm going to invoke my ICE agent with show me the network pol access policy sets. The ICE agent first needs to find the correct URL. So it looks it up based on the list and finds this network access policy sets. It then passes the URL. We get the payload as an observation. We have the final answer. And here we have this network access policy set information. So truly, a user here asking whatever question they want about whatever infrastructure they want, where a parent agent first decides the correct agent to hand it off to, that agent then invokes the tools it has access to, makes the request against the controller, or passes the correct PyETS parser command. We get the JSON back. This original agent then can then decipher it and hand it back to the human in natural language. Pretty cool stuff. So I hope this all makes sense to you. I really believe that agents, AI agents, are going to be like ants or bumblebees or honeybees where individually they may not be that intelligent, let's say, or have the ability to do anything remarkable. But collectively, if we have a swarm of bees or a hive of bees or a whole army of ants, collectively they start to show emergent behavior. They show signs of intelligence. They show capabilities of reasoning and taking action. So there's a real parallel, I think, to the way insects of the world show these emergent behaviors as these artificial intelligent agents collectively. Now I have three agents and you've seen me interface with three totally different disparate technologies. From a user's perspective, they can ask the question, and they get the answer. All of this is abstracted. And for me, it's really simple tools. It's really simple decorators where we build purpose-driven, modular, specialized agents. And we do this at scale horizontally across the different technologies that we have. What if I also had Meraki? What if I also had Catalyst Center? What if I also had wireless LAN controllers? You get the idea. What if I had F5 load balancers? What if I had uh, Arista data center switches? What if I had uh, Palo Alto firewalls? You, you, right, you kind of understand this. There's going to be agents that are going to be accessible to us that are like a new front end into these disparate technologies, then we can take them in like Lego blocks and like ants or honeybees and give purpose to hundreds, if not thousands of agents that completely augment and replace human functions. So I would get yourself turned on to this. I hope this was inspiring. This is another ongoing evolution of the artificial intelligence inflection point. Like, follow, subscribe, share, engage with me, ask me questions, give me your feedback, let me know what you think. It's all positive stuff. Thank you.